Good morning. All right, 724 my time. Today is April 1st, 2022. So, uh, second guess everything you hear today. <laughs> today is National Don't Believe Anything That You Hear. Let me, uh, I'm gonna find some uh, chiller music to listen to. I think I'm going to listen to um, the Circles album by Mac Miller this morning. Gonna get some cool. Uh, chill vibes going. All right, so uh, so yesterday, yesterday uh, I recorded a whole um, hour and fifteen, hour and twenty minutes, or something like that uh, stream, right? And uh, I went to post it, and it wasn't there anymore. It didn't, it didn't stream. So my entire stream was just lost it went somewhere i don't know where so i lost my entire stream yesterday um technical difficulties is something that i am just <laughs> getting used to um i never expected in 2022 so many issues coming up with uh with technology but that's all right we roll on with it all right let me adjust my audio just fractionally yeah, there we go. All right. Okay, once again, good morning. So today is going to be the first day um, that you are seeing my webcam up above my monitor instead of over to the side. So, awesome. I hope you guys like it. I am using a 4K Logitech uh, Brio, I believe is what it's called for my webcam. You got my... Uh, mic holder right here too so hopefully my audio sounds uh wonderful all right let's go over market watch all right the es is currently up a tenth of a percent dow futures are up a quarter of a percent nasdaq is down seven no not seven seven hundredths of a percent zero point zero seven percent and the Russell is up a quarter of a percent, much like the Dow. Let's see. Currencies are mixed this morning, with Australian dollar being higher, British uh, pound being lower, euro lower, Canadian dollar mixed, but fractionally higher this morning. Yen down another percent. Uh, I feel like we were down. Yen was down like a percent the other day. That's why I say uh, another percent. And uh, yeah, I don't really watch the peso, New Zealand dollar. Some that that's something that the African something I don't know. Uh, the Swiss dollar is also lower. Metals, um, gold is down six tenths of a percent. Copper is down four tenths of a percent. Palladium is up three percent. Platinum up one point one four percent, and silver is down six tenths of a percent as well. Crude oil this morning so far is down 2% or $2 basically. Heating oil up 1.28%. Natural gas up 3 quarters of a percent. That's some wild moves going on in, uh, in uh, natural gas and RBOB gas futures down a percent. So um, this is probably going to happen several times until I get used to it. With my webcam over on my laptop screen to the side... I was always saying my laptop screen so I could make sure that um, I'm streaming the right monitor. So the entire time I've been going over Market Watch, you guys have been seeing Bookmap. I meant for you guys to see this, but uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get through it. All right, corn up 1.29 percent, and that's all the data I have on grains apparently. T note futures, they're all down. Yields must be higher this morning. Um, I can only see the 10-year that is up 2.3%, and uh, looks like the 2 and 10 aren't inverted anymore, but they are pretty flat, and uh, the 5 and 30 are kind of kind of flat as well. But uh, the, the 5 and 10 are inverted, and... Five, no. 
Yeah, yeah, five and ten are inverted. Sorry, let me re reply. Had a uh, something to reply to on Twitter. April Fool's Day, so be careful. Don't trust anything that you hear today. All right, let's go over cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin down almost 1%, currently sitting down 8 tenths of 1%. And Ethereum is up 1.4%. Cool. So I got um, Micro NASDAQ up uh, for the moment. I'm going to watch it. I've really been trading crude oil more. Uh, more movement, more volatility, you know. Um, so yeah, market opens in... Uh, soon a couple seconds let's see if i can get it market's open there we go i think <laughs> unless my book map is uh lying to me okay no time remaining all right so here in um micro nasdaq um right at close yesterday we penetrated below the support level and um, we got a retest a couple hours ago in the early morning hours, um, 5, 6 a.m. this morning, uh, mountain time. So, yeah, that that could have been a good entry for a short if your bias is to the short side. And I believe with the way it looks right now, my current bias is to the short side on a, on micro NASDAQ. We got a book map over here just uh, um, rumbling around, moving around and all that. All right. Um, nah, no, crude, my bad. Crude is at $99. Um, so it'll, it might be dead here for the next little bit. Um, crude has been doing that recently where the movement happens um, overnight, really. And then once market opens, it doesn't really do anything for, you know, like 30 minutes or something. But let's see. Let's uh, zoom in and see if we can, if we see anything. Let's see. Some big sell volume coming in. Volume expansion, no surprise, at open. Uh, just selling one minute as well. We have a support level right here. Uh, so we, if we can fall below here. Um, this could be a potentially a good move, but I don't want to necessarily get short right at the range bottom. That's just a uh, that's just asking for trouble, in my opinion. <laughs> so if we break below here, um, the next spot I'd look to is right here, like ninety eight sixty uh, area. Let's see if we can uh, spot an entry on the. 10 second. Let's see. We're not too far away from this 21. I kind of want to uh, take this trade. Um, it could be a little premature, though. That's kind of what's got me a little sketchy because we do have the support level right here let's uh maybe this will help us a little basically like this what is nasdaq doing it's up right now let's uh flip over to that for the moment Okay, it looks like we got above VWAP here. We got above yesterday's close and this session open. Um, that looks bullish, but here on Bookmap, it's looking like uh, this could be creating a resistance uh, zone. So I am on the lookout for that. Um, hey, my, ma my cursor is showing up today. Why did... Okay. Yeah, so yesterday my cursor wasn't... Uh, Showing up on my screen, my live stream didn't go through, so yesterday was a day of technical difficulties. Oh, and 
how is my connection, by the way? I hope that it's great. Um, so along with the 4K um, webcam and my mic stand right here, I also ran an Ethernet cable from my modem to my laptop. So hopefully my it's just looking perfect. I, that's what I'm hoping for. So 14.935 has acted as a resistance uh, so far. Uh, we'll continue to monitor that. Has crude done anything? 90.91. It's still crude is still holding on. Uh, could be dropping now. Oh no, no, it's not. My bad. I'm sorry. It's not dropping. It's actually going up. Okay. Uh, did any news come out? Okay, I don't see any uh, crude news. Uh, let's see, let's, oh man, goodness. Well, I'm liking that. We're getting some movement in NASDAQ now. Let's see, let's flip back over. <clears throat> I'll trade it if I can spot a move. Um, I have to get a really good entry though. All right, we got prior session low right here. We could, um, I could totally see us tapping that. We're so close. We're like 15 points away. 15 points on the NASDAQ is is nothing. So I, I, I'm i thinking that we could get there. Unless buyers just come in that strongly and, uh, and hold price above that uh, level. I'll mark it here on my hourly just... Um, just so um, we can all see it just a little better. All right, so we're five minutes into open. Feels like longer for some reason. I feel like it's been open for 15 minutes now. <laughs> but uh, just five for now. Um, so let's just keep watching, and um, we'll, we'll decide on what we want to do when we see a move. I'm trying to... Um, balance both crude oil and micro nasdaq so I'm, I'm flipping in between them a little bit um i hope i don't miss like every fucking move doing that <laughs> all right so uh we got a little bit of lower liquidity down here um lately this liquidity uh several weeks ago the liquidity was when you saw high concentrations i we were seeing breakouts so and to say this liquidity right here i was longing getting long into this liquidity, but lately, um, this liquidity areas have been acting as support and resistance zones. So it's important to objectively look at the stock market or the futures market or whatever market you look at, Forex even, and, um, and, um, adapt to it because it does change what works, you know, for one month might not work for another month. So when I see high concentrations like this, I'm going to start um, probably taking, playing them as resistance and support areas. So this would be resistance. I'd short up here where a month ago, a month and a half ago, I was actually getting long. So that's how I'm observing the markets, and that's how I'm going to, um, to try and adapt to the changing markets. See, we had uh, liquidity down here, and so far we are getting a bounce. So, um, yeah. Got to take coffee break. Let me uh, pause my mic for the moment, uh, just so you don't hear me slurping on my Americano. All right, I'm back. Let me peep over at crude oil on the market analyzer tab. It's at ninety nine eighty nine. Um, we'll we'll just uh, keep monitoring that. I ha I've been trading crude well for the most part. Um, so yeah, we'll see. NASDAQ is kind of uh, chopping right now. That's kind of what we've seen at open. Uh, like yesterday at open. It felt like it was chopping yesterday. Maybe not. Oh, okay. Well, that's market open. Yeah, see at market open yesterday, we kind of just chopped around and we there were some moves there were moves but um i don't trade 
that late into the day normally. Maybe sometimes I'll hop on Ninja Trader and take a trade if I see something. But uh, for the most part, I'm done about 8.30, 9.30, so hour, hour and a half, I'm out. But then at close, or you know, getting towards the close, we started uh, dropping. Yeah, and, and once again, I, I, I didn't flip my monitor, so you didn't see what I was talking about. So yeah, we chopped like yesterday morning here. And I get out. When I got out, it was like 8.40, so we hadn't even really uh, had a convincing breakout above this little congested area, and going into the close yesterday, um, it sold off. Let's peek back over at crude. It's at 100 flat right now, um, so that's a pretty big area. Um, I A lot of buyers there a lot of sellers. Uh, coming from the downside, I'd assume there'd be more sellers, but it really just um, depends on the um, the general consensus of how are things um, with the Russian invasion and all that. Getting a little bounce, or pullback, I should say. Uh, this could be a good place to take a short. Um, I don't think it would provide me enough um, I wouldn't have. I would only be able to get like 15 points at max, and then I normally move my profit target just above my area of interest, just to ensure that most of the time I get filled. See, like right there, I would have had my profit target a couple of points higher, just my own anxiety, probably. <laughs> but we are coming on this level, so. I think um, if we come back down to this 50 level, I might try and, and uh, take a long here. But we, see, the thing is we're downtrending. So we could be getting a double bottom, but until we like penetrate through this level here, I still we're still just kind of downtrending, right? We're just going sideways right now. So perhaps if um, a resistance zone is formed on... Oops is formed on book map perhaps I'll short in I'll, I'll short the resistance zone um, but it just depends on what it looks like but um yeah I mean the double bottom might be a good place to get long I really um, I really don't know so uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that plays out crude oil almost at one hundred and one dollars I'm trying to watch a book map over here, uh, and I was considering looking or uh, looking at crude a little bit uh, more. Oh, so how's everybody doing this morning? I am kind of tired. I stayed up late last night watching um, um, Scotch and Smoke Rings with Oxhorn. So I stayed up late watching that, and so I, was, I slept all the way to my alarm this morning which seems to be becoming more common. <laughs> I mean, I normally crash around like 8.30. Man, 8.30 came around, I was still wide awake, so Oxhorn was live on YouTube, and figured I'd hang out and just chill, watch a, watch a live stream for a little bit. So, uh, so far, the double bottom uh, holding. Let me scroll down to crude. Uh, we're still waiting. It's still just below $101. So now, after that big push up, we're kind of just uh, consolidating a little bit.
So my ideal entry on here, if I do end up taking a long position, I'd like to see like minor penetration of this 850 level, just like putting the tip in, you know, um, and I'd love to get in uh, a long position there because that would provide me the best um, entries. Let's see. Let's uh, let's go ahead and just do uh, my M2 strategy. And see, we still haven't really come down to the 50 level. Uh, this current 60 minute candle, the low is 56.50. So we still haven't properly tested uh, this uh, um, 14,850 level yet. Look, algorithms turned off. Uh, I think we have some eco data coming out. That's always a good way uh, to know if there's data coming out. Because several seconds before um, any kind of data comes out, normally the al these um, bid and ask algorithms will will uh, uh, get turned off. Yeah, and I have technical difficulties pretty much every morning. Here I am, my crosshairs aren't showing up, just my cursor. And I can't even like click in book map. So, yeah. Another day, another technical difficulty. Let's see, what's the low now? Still 56, so we still haven't made um a lower low on this hourly candle. And uh, I thought we had some data coming out, but Walter Bloomberg hasn't posted an update. Um, United States Manufacturing Purchasing Managers Index will be released in 50... Okay, here we go. Uh, came in at 58.8 versus the 58.5 forecast. So uh, slightly better than forecasted. Uh, no, um, no big surprises either way, really. All right. I'm still thinking about taking a long down here. I'm just kind of uh, waiting for a good entry. Crude is at $100.50 now, so uh, it's come off a little bit. I think a, a short trade might work out here, at least till we get to uh, 50. Wouldn't provide me enough uh, points, though. Let's see, normally this concentration of liquidity, I'd be getting short into it. Um, and that's certainly how it was a month ago. But um, it's, it's changed a little bit now, so... Um, yeah. All right, I got a limit order on 48. So if we just like uh, get the tip in, basically, um, yeah. I'm looking for a slight penetration of this level. So just a little, little push through. Let um, hopefully the impatient traders take shorts for the breakdown. And uh, I'll be there to take some longs. But once again, we're getting another bounce. We still haven't tested this area um, at 50. Our, our current low for this hourly candle is still 56.50. So buyers are coming in heavy um, down here, pretty strong. So still just sitting around waiting for some penetration to happen. But now that this liquidity is uh, evaporating, it, it does make me a little bit more sketched out on taking this trade. But I like it how we're just continuously bouncing. These high liquidity zones are just acting as support levels. Let's 
but uh, maybe here in a moment uh, we'll get a fill and we'll see if this double bottom will hold. I'm going to do uh, a, a two lot on these, this micro trade. Um, still very small risk. Um, here on the candlestick chart, it's looking weak. Hang on, let me... Let me, uh, there we go. Okay. So here on the candlestick chart, uh, this is, to me, this is the pullback, right? I always say it, if it's in the body of the previous candle, technically, to me, I see that as a pullback. Um, but we'll just have to see. Yesterday, um, down here, when I was looking really weak, uh, I'll even show, when I was looking really weak yesterday, I, I'm played the same move just like this on book map right um support zone or a high liquidity to the bottom would act as support so i bought nearly the bottom yesterday morning but um i just got a almost 20 well it looks like 80 something so i must not have got too much out of it i probably got like 14 15 points out of this one where if i would have held it um could have multiplied so i am going to try and Hold my trades a little longer today. Um, kind of going to see if I can get filled, and then we rotate back up to this uh, this support level. That would be uh, pretty nice, about a hundred points. But we'll just have to see. Um, this hourly candle just made a new low at fifty two seventy five, so we still haven't we still haven't seen um, a good test of fifty yet. So. Let's see how this acts. I think I'm about to get filled on it. So we got liquidity. I'm going to try and play this as a support. Uh, low risk support. Low risk entry. Come on. There we go. All right. I'm in. Let's go ahead and I guess we'll keep this 20 up and then I'll keep my runner up. But we could, we, we could keep going down, but... I was kind of trying to play this uh, support level here. All right. And I'm out of that one. So let's see how this candle closes out because it could still uh, it could still come back around. So we'll keep an eye on that. We have like eight minutes and some change left until this candle closes. So let's uh, scroll back down to crude. It's coming down uh, 100 and 10 cents now is where crude is at. Gonna come in here and see if I see anything. So there's the pop, pop to my, um, all the way to the top of this resistance slash support level. Perfect test and got shut down. Volume expanding at after open, of course. And I don't think I'm really seeing anything on crude uh, at this moment. Nothing that's just popping out at me. So we'll keep an eye on that. But, um, yeah, we'll just have to see. Because I'm not currently seeing anything here. Um, we're buttoning up into this resistance zone. So we could reject, like, the pre this previous resistance zone that I have drawn. You know, we kept we kept hitting it. We got to the top, and then just a flush, right? So that could be something similar to what we're going to see happen here. It's still, you know, we won't know until after it happens, right? But, uh, yeah, interesting to see. NASDAQ down to almost 14,800. So that closes out, and uh, just several more minutes. And uh, let's see what happens. Here is a, another area we could be getting the bounce, 30, but yeah, we're just above 14,800 currently. So I imagine once this candle closes, I'm thinking that we might get a pullback and maybe we'll uh, come in here at this uh, double bottom and get a retest, maybe continue lower. But it's all about uh, it's all about the entries. You got to have good entries, 
good exits, all of that. Here would have been a perfect entry for a bear, um, but unfortunately, I didn't see it, and I didn't take the trade. But all right, looking here at book map, we got all this liquidity down here. Let's uh, let's zoom in a little bit on. Let's get to some lower time frames. All right, about time for another coffee break. Crude is just barely holding on to 100. If we drop, it could be a good place for buyers to come back in just below 100. Um, but it could also continue to drop. So I don't I don't know what's going to happen there. There's nothing predictable um, um, that I see. So no trades in crude yet. I'm one trade in on micro NASDAQ and... Uh, yeah, so let me drink some coffee real quick. I thought my mic had been muted this whole fucking time. I just muted it, and um, I saw a little bit of volume over here, and I was like, oh, shit. I've been talking for 30 fucking minutes <laughs> with my mic off. So this might be act, this is acting as a support level for right now. Um, you know, no surprise, it's an even one hundred uh, number, fourteen thousand eight hundred. Roughly the point of control here, um, I think, could act as a little traction area, but we might just continue down to uh to this level let's see let's um let's pull out our handy dandy um volume profile tool now i really like this because let's see let's take it right here actually point of control for the most volume was traded is here all the way down at uh, 649, 650 basically. This is the value area high at around 39. So um, maybe the value area high could provide a little bounce. But at this point, with the way we immediately sold off here on this resistance level, um, double bottom got, got broken. Um, I'll probably look for a short and I might try and write it down to uh, somewhere around here in this general uh, area so if that does happen it, it will it'll be a longer trade it might not last the entire stream or the stream might not last as long as the trade does so I'll just have to see but I uh, still waiting for this uh, hourly candle to close out and see how we close uh, 757 right now so if we close towards the bottom that's that's going to be pretty weak to me. I'm going to probably get in on a pullback. And uh, if I do get in a short trade on a pullback, I'm going to try and write it down to uh, this level to try and play it level by level. Crew trying desperately to hold on, uh, not drop below $100 again. We'll see um, how successful it is. Uh, I don't want to flip over to crew just yet um, because I might get into uh, a, a short trade here on micro NASDAQ.
So yeah, hopefully uh, my connection looks great. Um, I've never really used an Ethernet cable before. And wow, let me tell you. I was getting uh, like 40 megabits per second um, before it just connected my 5G. And now I'm getting, I'm, I'm peaking around 85 megabits per second. So um, I'm loving that. And notably, the algorithm's turned off. Are there any more economic data coming out? Let's see. Let's see if old WB posts uh, an update. Check the calendar out. Let's see. Uh, 10. We got the ISM manufacturing for March uh, coming in. And we also have construction spending coming in as well. What did it come in at? Um, 57.1 versus the 58.6 expectation. So I am liking that. Um, so far, no pullback, and I was kind of hoping for uh, as soon as this candle closed to have a pullback. So um, I don't know how I'm feeling about that short trade now. Um, if we could have finished near the lows on this previous candle and immediately started pushing back upwards, I think that this double bottom would have been a great... Um, would have been a great entry, but now that the uh, with the formation, see where we closed off the the lows for that candle, and we haven't gotten a pullback yet. So I wanted to see a close down here, and then as soon as that candle closed, get a push up, right? But uh, we haven't gotten that so far. So I'm just gonna watch book map and. Um, See what happens. Uh, what's crew doing? Crew's at one hundred dollars and fifty cents currently. Market has been open for thirty-one minutes. Let's look at the ES. We never like look at the ES. Let's just uh check that out real quick. Should be similar to the NASDAQ here. Yeah, we're actually we've actually held the double bottom though on the ES. So um this this could provide extra strength uh for the NASDAQ. Um I, I do have to walk away for a moment. I have another uh, little project that I got to go get started. So I'm going to leave Bookmap open because um, I think that provides the most entertainment, at least to me, it does. Um, so yeah, give me about three minutes and I'll be right back. I got to go do some stuff.
Got to catch my breath after running up them stairs. <laughs> I'm not too unhealthy, right? <laughs> All right, sorry about that, folks, but uh, I am back now. Went ahead and dropped an edible while I was upstairs. So that'll, uh, haven't eaten anything since, uh, Three o'clock yesterday afternoon, I think, is when I had uh, my my dinner. Uh, so it should not take long for Zedible to kick in, probably about 45 minutes. Right when I'm getting off uh, my stream, it'll probably start kicking in. <laughs> right, so we're getting a bounce. This is kind of the area I was looking for to take a short, but now, now I'm a little... Damn. I'm going to get used to it. Look, I'm, I'm going to get a stream deck soon. I'm, I'll be be pressing buttons, making magic happen. This was the place I was looking to get a short in at, this double bottom. But this kind of looks strong. The way it closed. Hmm. Let's just try and play it again. We don't have, you know, very high uh, risk. We're only doing a... Two lot of micros, so uh, yeah, let's just uh, see how it goes. Um, so a couple reasons why I got into this. Number one, we are downtrending. Two, we have a failed double bottom. Um, three, we hit the resistance up here, and we have sold off. So um, this does look a little strong to me. Um, but if it does continue to the downside, this could provide a great um, risk to reward ratio. Let's see, I'd risk, looks like uh, about 20 points is what my risk is. Um, I have one contract set to close for a 20 point profit. And then um, I, I, I don't remember if I have an auto break even on this strat on this uh, second contract. Let's see. Let's find out, why don't we? No, so we don't have any um, stop law or auto break even there, so uh, that's fine. I'll just have to if if is a big thing. If we do hit right here, um, I will move my entry to break even, um, but we still have to you know drop twenty more points, so. We're just going to do a little bit of waiting around. Um, crude is holding is at 109 cents, so um, that might be ready to drop below uh, $100 again. But it, it's desperately trying to hold on. So for the moment, we're just going to hang out, chill, do a little banter, exchange looks. As the late great Mac Miller said, well, you know, I figure right now is a great time for a coffee break. So sellers did come in. Um, sellers came in right there at the uh, at the double bottom. Um, pretty much perfectly I mean to the T right um, so there were other traders um, seeing that as a potential entry as well we just don't know if there's going to be enough right that's still the uh, un unknown because we're still in this trade but uh, I'd like to say that we're gonna continue to the downside but at the end of the day my beliefs my opinions don't matter so we're just going to continue to sit here patiently and hang out. Getting a little bounce um, on a 2000 tick chart. You can kind of uh, see it right there. But uh, that's fine. And bookmap really isn't showing us too much. Uh, it's kind of scattered. Up here, there's a lot of... Uh, um, there's concentration of liquidity. And really, we're just trying to figure out. It's kind of a tug of war between um, buyers and sellers. This was kind of um, 
strong looking, right? But then we're also in a downtrend. So um, definitely an area of interest. Um, but we'll just see how valid uh, this is. It's uh, pretty much like a game of tug of war right now. Who who has the most strength? Who's going to move us? And I believe if we continue on this 2,000 tick chart uh, moving upwards, oh, my bad. See, if we get above here, we might we might get kicked out. So this is kind of the zone to watch. I will mark it. Um, oops, I didn't. Okay, I pressed F2, my keys for F3. So this is kind of um, what I'm watching. If we can break above here, it might provide enough strength to bulls um, to at least get back up to 69 and stop me out. Um, but again, we'll just have to see. There are no certainties here. Yeah, today is Friday, and I am so happy that today is Friday. Um, I'm ready to sleep in because I only sleep in on the weekends, unless I just feel like sleeping in on a, on a weekday, which doesn't really happen very often. So it's getting closer and closer to uh, taking us out right here to getting stopped out. Even if it does, I did like this trade, and I like that sellers also did come in here as well um uh, there was a little tug of war action so it does mean that was a good area that people other people other traders were watching but um i just don't know if there was enough sell pressure um to push price down all right i think my music stopped let me oh no youtube paused it all right, excellent connection on my stream. So I'm liking that. Oh man, I got all the way in at 40, so that's a almost a 30 uh 30 point risk. Uh sellers pushing it back down right now. I don't know how long that'll last though. But um so we're just going to continue to sit tight here and uh and see what happens. Crude is still holding above 100, so um, definitely, it's obviously it's an area of importance. It's, it's 100, right? It's a good even number. I think we're about to get uh, taken out here. Um, so buyers are still holding crude above 100. Um, so yeah, currently down 1%. All right, there we go. Oh, not yet. Let's go ahead and save ourselves a few points. Um, we're, we seriously closed like one point away from my stop loss. So I'm pretty sure I, I'm, I was about to get stopped out there. So I just saved myself a couple of dollars by closing it a little earlier, right? So um, I did like that trade. I liked how... Um, other sellers were coming in as well, um, but there just wasn't enough selling to uh, to push price down. Buyers were um, pretty adamant on on getting there. So yeah, I all right. See, I would have been taken out there, so I saved myself five. I saved myself twenty dollars by um, by go ahead and closing that because um, my stop was somewhere. It was at sixty nine somewhere, and this candle's already gone up to seventy one. So I saved myself like $20 closing it a little early, but um, important to look at the market objectively. Um, as close as we closed to there, uh, it was, I was going to get stopped out. Um, I accepted that. That's okay. If I can save myself a little money, I'll do it. Shit, I saved myself 20 bucks, man. That's like, that's like breakfast at a coffee shop. So, but see now, uh, now buyers are feeling, um, uh, more courageous now they're starting to to pile in here and that's all right this could be a resistance area forming right here uh, excuse me i don't know let's see crude might be getting ready to make this break 
uh, down. So on the hourly candle so far, it just looks like a, a pullback. But again, we are in this resistance zone, so we could break out, we could get rejected. Let's see, let's close, let's delete that, clean the chart up a little bit. Let's see how my mic audio looks good. My microphone is not muted. Great. Because it happens. It happens to me uh, uh, regularly. <laughs> Y'all know me, I always have technical difficulties. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeing anything in crude, and I really, um, I like the two trades I've taken today. I feel like I've had good reason to take both of them, um, and they were also small risk, so, um, yeah, so I don't mind that. Um, it's Friday. I don't want to force anything. I don't want to put the pedal to the metal, so I have two L's right now, very small um, losses maybe 120 bucks, something like that. And, uh, yeah, so I won't be looking for too much more uh, this morning. I want to get my trading over with so I can go about my day and work on my other projects that I have going. By the way, if you're, like, one of the few people that see this stream, number one, you're fucking awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you. And also, if you are into, like, video game streaming. I'm playing, um, I just bought Green Hell last night on Steam. It was on sale. It's a game that I've been interested in uh, just for a couple months now. So I'm going to stream that tonight. Tonight I'm going to stream Green Hell. And um, uh, if you want, just comment on this video, uh, whatever, you know, and uh, I'll send you my gaming channel where you can watch me stream Green Hell. So that's one of the projects I got going on today. Um, I, I am also a bird nerd. Yes, you heard that right. I am a bird nerd. I have a... I love birds so much. In fact, I have a flock. I have a flock of budgies. I have six budgies. I have Keddy, Atlas, Asul, Yuka, Iroh, and Ozai. So I have six budgies. And um, I run a... I run a few YouTube channels, actually, uh, a couple different projects I have going on. So I run a bird um, YouTube channel where I just record my outside birds. I feed them. I made this little um, little station for them where they can get water, and they got all their seed there. So um, I like to record them, and I post them to YouTube as kind of just like background music or noise. Um, and uh, I feel like videos sleep for your cats and dogs if you're not there. So that was what I had to go do earlier. I had to go take my phone, set it up in the tripod at the uh, bird station. Um, cause it should be getting about time for them to come get their morning seed. So working on that. Got my stream. So yeah, I try and stay busy. Uh, let's see. And NASDAQ really isn't doing anything too exciting right now. Neither is crude. They're both just kind of chopping. I do like, though, we did get this close above previous close. That's only on a five-minute, though. Uh, sellers are definitely... Can I adjust my mic a little bit? I don't feel like it was in my way this much before. Okay. So sellers are starting to come back in here. Um, looks like they came in on the retest of the 9 EMA. Yeah, they didn't even make it up to the 21. And look at that. They're coming in uh, pretty heavy. So, yeah, that's interesting. I don't I don't, I don't, don't see a move. I mean, we're moving lower, but I don't see um, a setup with my, with my uh, eyes. So, we're just going to continue to hold off on that. Pretty nice, though, man. If I if I could just see, like, 60 seconds into the future, <laughs> probably would have been uh, a good trade. I could have hopped in up here with the power foresight, that is. Hopped up here, already be up 50 points. But, unfortunately, no one has that power. Though, if I was a superhero, I would totally 
instead of like having you know x-ray vision and all these other things and and be like the flash now let me see like a minute or two into the future um i'd be a very wealthy man and i i'd just be chilling (laughs) i'd just be hanging out so yeah sellers came in pretty heavy right there really heavy i mean look we even made a Man, I'm half-ass tempted to get in here, though, for real. All right, let's try one more today. This is 100% going to be my last uh, trade on the day. Um, This is a little bit more of a YOLO just because I have such a small risk on here. So we made a lower low. We even got a perfect pullback right here. Um, That were perfect in my eyes. That's what I like to see. So now if we come back up here and uh, this candle pushes back up to 50, I'm, I'm pretty sure my trade will be invalidated at that point. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, so let's just see how it works out. We'll get one contract to close right here at the uh, retest or you know, roughly at the low, current session low. So let's see how that works out. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up to just above break even to cover my commissions, just in case this does reverse. Um, at least this um, won't be taking a big L on this, right? So we're so close. Come on, just a little lower, a little lower. A couple more points, a couple more points. All right, we're getting some buyers in. I'm just going to move this a few points higher to see if we can lock in some gains. Oh, man. Talk about talk about a quick uh, buy-up. So it's looking like I'll get kicked out of this at just above break-even. Um, that's fine. I'd rather close this at just above break-even than um, close it for, I don't know how many points I risked on that one uh roughly 20 points so small profit on that one (laughs) you guys you see how close how close I, I was three points away from getting at least one profit target filled on that but that's trading that is trading that shit happens all the time and the important thing is to just not be bothered I mean you just gotta stay centered be objective and uh and just have a really chill uh, vibe, I think. So I came three points away from my target, my profit target getting filled. But um, hey, it is what it is. That's just the way it be. But today is Friday. Um, I don't like to trade a lot on Fridays, just because each trade just adds more risk, right? I want to go into the weekend feeling good, feeling confident um, about my trading. Nothing's worse than um, having the whole weekend to think about your (laughs) fuck-ups. Trust me, I know. I fuck up enough. I fuck up enough to know. All right, let's see. I got to turn my fans up a little bit. Uh, It's a little little warm in my uh, office den. Oh, and if you're curious about the temperature, it is... 63.5 63.5 degrees in my office den, and I am loving it. But yeah, so close on that one. <laughs> uh, you know, they say laughter is the best medicine. That's true. <laughs> All right, what was my entry on this? I, I am, let's see, I got it at 29.50, it looks like, and I got stopped out at like 28.50, so I, I just covered my commissions um, on that trade. But... Hey, that's just the way it be. I'm um, I'm indi- indifferent to that. Let's check on crude real quick. Uh, crude is still oh, we're at one hundred dollars and two cents. So could be getting ready for a penetration below. Um, this is interesting to note as well. If you look right here, maybe it's Control F two. 
my hotkey. So lower highs, right? That's what we that's what we established with this. And then not only do we have lower highs, but then look, we have a base where buyers are coming in. So this is typically um, bearish, right? Because we're making lower highs, and eventually, if this continues, sellers will overwhelm buyers here at this area. Um, best entry here would be wait for price to get green when nobody wants, to, when nobody's trying to take a short, take a short. It's going to offer the best risk to reward, and that's if it, this is if, if you're watching this trade. I'm not telling you to take a short, but um, so we could be getting ready to break through here, but I don't like these areas of traction, right? Um, so we have the nine or the 21 EMA right here, just below this level. All right. So we got nine or 21 EMA. Then we also have VWAP and then we have prior session low. That's a high concentration of areas to, for price to get traction on. Right. So that makes me hesitant on taking a short trade here. Um, just because we, we could, get a flush to like 84, you know, just barely below this 21 EMA and get a rapid pullback. Thought about getting in here and maybe risking like 10 cents. I said that last one was going to be my last trade though. I'd hate to go back on my word. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I mean, look, already a, a short up here would uh, provide just over 10 cents of profit. Um, but I love streaming because not only do I have the ability to potentially help other people out and people have the ability to help me out, when I'm streaming, I'm always conscious that I'm being watched, right? That somebody's watching me. That really helps me stick to my rules. So hopefully my streaming can help you guys, you viewers, other people, and because it also helps me out. Um, I'm, I might have taken a short there, and I might have made money, but it's recorded. You guys saw it. You guys heard it. That NASDAQ, excuse me, that NASDAQ trade was going to be my last trade, right? So I can't get into this because I gave you guys my word. I can't go back on it now. But this is what I mean. I was looking at taking a short up here. I could have risked 10 cents. That's what I was looking at. I'd already be up roughly 20 cents. But, you know, it's good that I didn't because I told myself I wasn't. And breaking your rules is a very, very slippery slope. You just tweak a, a rule a little bit and you risk your entire system, your entire rule set going out the window. So, um, yeah. Could have been a decent scout. That's all right. There's always going to be more moves in the market. Um, always hesitant on Fridays. But, uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's make sure my stream is still working. Yep. All right. Excellent connection. I've been live for an hour and four minutes. So market um, have has almost the market has almost been open uh, for one hour. But I'm liking this. Um, this is looking like a good, like it was short. I mean, but I gave you guys my word. I gave you my word. That's my last trade. How can you believe me if I say this is my last trade and then I take one more? Right, so I mean, look, twenty cents a profit already, but um, hey, that's just the way it is. Um, but that that right there, that potential trade was a great example. Look at that, forty cents, and look, just like I, I said earlier, there's so much areas to get traction. We could just barely penetrate this twenty-one EMA and then bounce, but looks like we're we're going to continue to flush a little bit. So. This is what I mean, though. Perfect example of selling into strength. And it's not always 100%, but it, psychologically, it's harder to do. And I think that's where the edge comes from, right? Wow, I mean, that would have been, god damn, that would have that been a great one. 
that would have given me a a boost going into the weekend. <laughs> but yeah, if you sold up here, you're if you're wrong, you're gonna be wrong really fucking quickly. Could have gotten in here, risked ten cents, right? And then look, I mean, we got we got the breakdown like we were talking about, and uh, yeah, this would have been the prior session uh, low would have been a great place to close. Um, if you didn't want to hold it, but yeah, so selling into strength right there can have its advantages, and um, it's definitely something I want to implement more in my own personal trading. Um, a lot of times, as a momentum scalper, I get in high and sell higher. I get in low and buy lower, right? But that's not always the best approach. Um, because oftentimes it's it's chasing, right? Oftentimes my momentum scalping, I'm really chasing, hoping for price to continue lower. Um, but up here, this really offers you the best risk to reward. I mean, say you got in here at 32, right? Or the high, let's say 33, the previous candle high. You got in at 33, you could risk seven cents even just to get above this last high. And uh, if you got sketched out right here, you could close for 12, 14 cent profit, some 15 cent profit or something like that. So, um, yeah, that's something I want to implement in my own personal trading more. But I like that I like that this held. I like that this held. Um, but, yes, um, Mark has been open for an hour. It's Friday. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, I hope that you can learn something, and I know that I definitely continuously learn by doing this stream, so I'm I'm going to be doing it for a very long time, I feel like, and crude's still just flushing. I'm so, I just looked over it half expecting Bookmap to be open, and you guys have no clue what I've been talking about this entire time, <laughs> but luckily, no, you guys, I, I have this um, open on the right monitor. But um, thank you all. I appreciate you. If you're interested in watching my gaming stream, um, just drop a comment down below. And um, I'll post a link to my Twitch and my YouTube channel. But uh, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you all. I appreciate you. It looks like my stream worked this morning and my connection was great. So sorry that my stream didn't post yesterday. Um, I was up 200, $270 something dollars yesterday. Um, so... That didn't get posted. You didn't get to see. That's all right. We're going to have plenty more trades. This look, Holding this, taking the short where I called it and still holding it, one whole dollar in profit on crude oil. That's that's a G. That's a, a G, a contract. That's a lot of money. But um, all right, that's going to be it for me. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Um, I'm going to I might play some Warzone and stream that here in a moment. So, yeah, um, hope you all have a great weekend. Stay safe. And, um, yeah, I'll see you guys bright and early Monday morning. Peace.